Should you read Albert Spears Inside the Third Reich? That's the question that I hope to help you answer for yourself today by talking about my general impressions of the book, a little bit about the author, Albert Speer, who he is, and then talking about sort of the composition of the book, a little breakdown of the subjects that are actually discussed in the book so you have a better understanding, if you decide to pick this up, of what you'll actually be reading about. Uh, so first off, general impressions. I thought this book was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's fairly long at about 500 pages, um, but it's a breeze to read. Uh, the writing style is very easy to read and actually very, very entertaining. Uh, and as for the actual content of the book, if I were to describe it in a word, I would say honest or forthright. Um, first off, it does exactly what it says in the title. Um, this book serves to give you a very, very good and honest understanding of what it would have been like to actually operate as one of the higher ups inside the, the political Third Reich, to form the close personal and political bonds with the, the Hitlers and the Goerings and the Goebbels of the, wor of the world. And again, it does it in such a way that is so forthrightly honest that even though this book is 100% decidedly critical of Hitler, it actually comes across as comparatively sympathetic, you know, given the, the glut of sort of anti-Hitler propaganda that we're used to receiving nowadays. Um, given that he is the the secular devil uh you know for lack of a better term someone just talking about him as a human albeit as a as a flawed human as someone albert spear definitively does not like it comes across as massively sympathetic and that to me was fascinating and i think anybody who has even a pass even a passing interest in world war ii history which should be pretty much everyone because again he is literally the secular devil um, so he is, Hitler is this, this symbol that permeates every single aspect of our society, you know, given that he is the, the antithesis to the good of, you know, the modern political push for diversity and things like that. Um, he touches every aspect of everybody's life today. Um, so I think I, I would, I would pretty much recommend this to anybody, uh, anyone living in the modern West, I suppose, but also of course, anyone who has an interest in World War II history or any of these these titans of history that were the higher ups inside the Third Reich. Um, because a little bit about Albert Speer, he was one of these higher ups of the Third Reich. Uh, now he started off as an architect. He was the principal architect for the Third Reich. And you'll in fact probably have seen a lot of his work thousands of times even if you've ever watched World War II history documentaries or things like that. The Nuremberg rally, for instance, uh, the famous Cathedral of Light in which they had 130 some odd anti-aircraft uh, lights pointed straight up in the sky in order to, you know, it was at nighttime as well. So they looked like giant pillars of light holding up, you know, the dome of the sky. Uh, that was actually architected by Albert Speer. Um, and, there, and there's a lot of other things basically, but uh, such as the, he had a whole model that they were going to redesign the city center of Berlin. And the focal point was going to be the Great Hall. It was this massive domed building, um, a, dome, a dome probably, you know, 10 times the size of the, the dome on the US Capitol building. Um, that was all architected. It was designed and actually modeled out by Spear. And it was something they were going to build, but never ended up doing it because obviously resources got diverted to the war. And in fact, it's probably a good thing they didn't because that dome would have just been the easiest target for bombers ever. So would have been destroyed anyways. Um, anyway, so yeah, that, that, that's who he was. And um, because Hitler was, you'll hear a lot of this nonsense about, oh, Hitler was, um, you know, he was a painter and he did landscapes. He was primarily a landscape painter. This is utter nonsense. His primary focus in his paintings was actually architectural. He was mostly drawing buildings and things like that. And as such, he actually very much enjoyed architecture and he designed a lot of buildings himself um, in his paintings. So he ended up forming a pretty close personal bond with Albert Speer. And when Speer would bring him blueprints and things like that for a new design, they would go back and forth a lot on it for hours and they would critique each other. And um, you know, if, if even weeks later, Speer was to bring a, an update to the blueprints, Hitler would remember you know, these minute details about like, oh, I see you changed you know, th this very, very small thing. It was something that he was intensely interested in. Uh, and for that reason, again, they ended up forming this, this close personal bond. And now towards the end of the war, Hitler sort of 
seeing the subterfuge and the the spies and the and having this intense distrust of you know people like the military brass and things like that he reverted to trusting people that he had personal bonds with rather than you know political bonds so out went the higher ups in the military in his his inner circle and in came the people that uh, again that he had formed close to personal bonds with this these were the people that were with him in the beginning of the nazi movement and uh people like spear so spear even though he was an architect he ended up being in charge of munitions production production uh, for the third reich so he went from designing things like the the great hall of berlin and now he was uh, producing ball bearings and tanks and rifles and things like that um, and he he was the absolute head honcho for that uh, and of course because of this because he was towards the end of the war one of the higher ups in the third reich he ended up at the nuremberg trials post world war ii and he was sentenced to you know by some world court which which is a concept that literally cannot even make sense in law but anyways he was sentenced to like 30 40 some odd years in prison and while well there, he wrote this book along with a few others. Um, so that's, that's enough about sort of his background. Um, I'm gonna talk now about the composition of the book, the subjects that are discussed in the book. Uh, so first off, I, I'd say architecture just real briefly, um, probably like you know, 10, 15% of the book, he's actually strictly just talking about architecture and not even architecture in regards to, you know, this was something that I was building and this is the relationship that I formed with Hitler. You know, he's, he's strictly just talking about uh, architecture, like talking about uh, these things he designed. And if that's interesting to you, you know, it, I have a, I, I, I suppose a passing interest as anybody would, but it's not really my, my focus. So the, those parts of the book were probably some of the most boring for me, uh, the architecture sections. Uh, another huge topic I, w I call Reich relations. And this is probably the main reason you'd want to read this book is um, basically the relationships that he, he forms with all the higher ups in the Third Reich. That would be the, the Goebbels, the Goerings, and the Bormann and things like that. You know, all these, again, these titans of history that you, you read about all the, all the time. It's so fascinating that, um, it's so fascinating just to see what it would have been like for this guy who was again, I believe a, a fairly honest forthright guy to have these relationships with him. Um, so I, I suppose <clears throat> that ends up being a little bit of like a self-insert fantasy. And, you know, it, again, that's the real reason you want to read this book is probably a good, like, again, 15, 20%. He's talking about the bonds that he forms with these people. Um, he talks a lot about the on-again, off-again political relationship that he had with Goebbels. You know, Goebbels, he was kind of, he was kind of a, a creep, kind of not that great a dude. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see how he begrudgingly ends up forming a bond with this guy um, and you know, has to ignore things like him cheating on his wife and you know, all, all sort of the, uh, the evil things Goebbels did. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, another huge chunk of the book and it's interesting, it's boring to read, but it's interesting for the impression it gives is sort of the time that he spends at party functions. Um, he spends a lot of times going to you know, dinner every night at Hitler's Ober Salzburg building. And he talks about the monotony of these meetings, how, you know, sort of the same stories Hitler, uh, Hitler would tell over and over and over again, and how everybody knew, he would basically tell it, you know, there'd be 20 people there and he would tell it for the sake of the one person who hasn't uh, heard the story, even though Spears said, you know, I've heard this 15 times. And everyone of course has to pretend that it's a great story and all these things like that. Um, again, these, these sections aren't, um, or, or indeed, he talks about, you know, on the Ober Salzburg where they spent a lot of time, that was Hitler's, Hitler's uh, eagle's nest, I think it's sometimes called. Um, they would, there was a tea house and they, they had to uh, walk up a path to it every day. So he would talk about how, you know, every day at tea time, um, all the politics discussion would stop. They put on their hats and their canes and their cloaks if it was cold and they'd take a march up there and someone had prepared, you know, cakes and teas and things like that. Of course, never alcohol, Hitler didn't drink. Um, and again, they would just discuss sporting events or philosophy or, or history or things like that. But the politics would just, you weren't generally allowed to discuss it up there. Um, and again, these are not super fascinating uh, sections to read, but they're interesting just for the impression that they leave upon you. The impression that, you know, the humanizing, I suppose, impression, which is just, again, something you never get of Hitler. Um, 
And if, you're, if you want to see an honest picture of somebody, you need to see all aspects of them. So, it, it, in which you never do. So it's just getting to see the side, uh, a side to this person who is the secular devil that, that you just never get to see, per, uh, never get to see usually. Um, so that's fascinating. Um, uh, big, a big section of the book, uh, given that it is his memoirs, uh, also is autobiographical. And, you know, Spear is a, he, he's a semi-interesting character anyway, so this is, you know, kind of worth reading. Um, it's, it, it's, they're not the worst sections of the book. Um, I will mention that in another testament to his honesty, um, Spear talks about his upbringing and pretty much says that he was, you know, upper middle class or, you know, even high class, lower high class. And that is what at the time they would have called petite bourgeois. Um, and he also mentions this very close to the, to the fact that he mentions, um, where he mentions that uh, Hitler and all the higher ups of the Third Reich, they tended to come from, you know, lower class, lower middle class, but working class families who generally at this time had a big distrust of the petite bourgeois. And I, th I think just the fact that he, he mentions these two facts uh, so close to each other and basically shows that he was more or less an outsider and that his people from his class generally weren't like, liked or trusted by the types who were on the Third Reich, I think it's just another testament to his honesty. You know, he didn't have to mention that. Uh, he didn't have to show that he was an outsider, but, but he did. And I think it's important that he did. And it shows that, again, he's just, uh, just an honest writer. Um, a, a brief section, uh, brief sections of the book are also historical, although they're very much not the focus of the book. You know, he talks about certain battles and things, and obviously political movements and invasions of you know Norway and things like that that were going on. But they only serve it; they only serve to talk about the greater uh, the greater story and talk about you know while we were invading Norway, this is what was happening inside inside the Third Reich. Um, so. I wouldn't read it for a historical survey, although of course it's talked about as a necessity to, uh, to sort of move the narrative along. Uh, and, and again, uh, the last section, the last big chunk of the book, I would say is talking about his personal relationship with Hitler. And this is of course the most fascinating part of this book, uh, given that he's the most fascinating historical figure. Um, and again, it's just interesting that Although this is a book that is decidedly critical of Hitler, it comes across as comparatively so sympathetic because he, again, is, he is the secular devil. We're not religious, but we have a statist uh, secular religion that people follow. And this is, this is basically, you know, it, it goes in with like the wokeism and all the things like that. Um, but given that we're still human, we still need this, this dichotomy of good and evil to, to guide our actions. And so the, the devil of... Uh, Judeo-Christian Islamic religions was, ba was basically replaced with Hitler, and now he is he is the antithesis to the good of diversity and things like that. The the religion that is that is preached by the statists. Um, so, anyways, uh, it, it's just interesting to see the devil uh, treated as a human when he never is, and obviously he was, you know, just as human as anybody else. He's uh, he does a lot of normal things, um, and and again. He is very, very much critical, but the he's coming at it from a viewpoint. Spear is coming at his relationship with Hitler from a viewpoint of um, this is somebody that I very, very much respected. I even revered. I worshipped what he said, and you know, he basically saw him as this immortal, nearing God-like figure um, in his relations with him, and he had this sort of impression of him all throughout the war until the end. And at that point, he sort of becomes disenchanted with Hitler. He starts to see the cracks in his armor. He starts to become disappointed with his decisions, you know, especially, especially when Hitler starts taking on more and more uh, direct control of the army. And he starts more and more disregarding some of the general's decisions um, that Speer and a lot of other people thought that he should follow. And this, this takes his opinion of Hitler from, you know, a revered, you know, beyond human sort of figure to, to, to very much human. And this, and this makes Spear, you know, again, I guess just, you know, he, he shines a little bit less, less brightly now <clears throat> in Spear's eyes. So <clears throat> he doesn't, um, if I were to, I, I came up with, you know, this phrase that I think describes pretty well um, how Spear desc uh, describes some of Hitler's actions. 
he doesn't justify them necessarily, but he does qualify them. He doesn't, he doesn't justify, you know, Hitler's poor decisions to not utilize uh, the jet engine to fight off the, the Allies, bom the Allied bomber raids, but um, he, he does qualify it and explain Hitler's thinking, which is not so irrational. It is, by the way, uh, you know, the, the Nazis came up with the, with the jet engine for planes, and a lot of the brass, the higher brass in the military was saying that, oh, we should put these on fighter jets and then we can, so they can fly 200 miles an hour faster than any of the enemy aircraft so they could completely outrun the escorts of the bombers, shoot down the bombers and then be out of there. Uh, Hitler's idea, which was a little kooky, but it's not, it's not so bad. His idea was to, well, what if we, we don't even need bombers anymore because we can just take the fighter jets, equip them with bombs, then go in and bomb and be out of there before anyone can even attack us. So, you know, we, we, we no longer need this paradigm of the, the bombers being escorted by fighters. Um, not so terrible of an idea, except for the fact that the fighters at the time, they could hardly carry any munitions and given the inaccuracy of the bombs, they really didn't end up hitting very much. So, um, so yeah, it, you know, that, that's just one... One of the stories that is often told about Hitler that will be sort of, again, not justified, but qualified. The fact that, oh, he didn't want to use the, the jet engines to, to stop the bombing raids. Um, no, he did. He very much did. He just had a different idea of how to use them. Uh, and there's dozens of stories like this, dozens of the, the popular narratives that are told, by, told about Hitler today that Speer will give a qualification to, and he'll explain what was actually going on. Not to say that it makes Hitler right, in fact, he was definitely wrong. They should have used the, the jet engine, of course, to, to shoot down the bombers. But, you know, it, it makes him come across as not, you know, not this whack job. He comes across as very, very humanizing, uh, humanized. And I guess in brief, that would be what I have to say about this book, is that it humanizes Hitler. That is, you know, it doesn't make him a good human, doesn't make him a bad human, doesn't, doesn't even necessarily pass a moral judgment either way, but it does humanize him. And if you, if you genuinely value truth and you genuinely value, no, you know, things, knowing what things were actually like, knowing facts, um, then you should not be afraid of, even if you dislike Hitler, of having him be humanized for you, having him be, you know, more fleshed out, becoming a, a three-dimensional character for you. So uh, I believe that's all I had to say about the book. Um, Practically anybody should read this book. It's a little long, but not too long, and it's fantastically well written. And it pertains, again, given that we are in this, this religion of a statist paradigm with Hitler as the devil, it literally pertains to everyone. And obviously doubly so if you are already interested in any World War II history. So anyways, thank you for watching, and have a good day.